Hey you guys, it's Peter, and I'm back! Of course I'm back, I'm not going anywhere! Peace! Peekaboo, I see you because I'm YouTube famous now! Available! Today! No, not today. Today, next year. Like, let's t January 30th, 2025. The album, Dad, Shimmy, Shimmy, AF, <clears throat> Rock on the Death Woman. Beast! Do you know what I was gonna sing today? I was gonna sing the theme song to Vanderpump Rules because Vanderpump Rules season 11 starts tonight. And you know who won't be watching it? Me. I will not be watching Vanderpump Rules tonight. Maybe tomorrow night, maybe Thursday, because let me tell you, I thought it could be done. No, 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 no. Seriously, I thought it could be done. I thought that I could uh, catch up with Vanderpump Rules in time to watch the premiere tonight with my husband. I was so excited about it, but unfortunately, that didn't happen. I, late last night, finished season nine and started season 10. I am on episode two of season 10. So I, like, I got 18 episodes. I woke up today and my friend Nikki texted me and she said, how many more episodes do you have? And I said, 18, dot, 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 dot. But I'm gonna get them done. I'm gonna get them done today or tomorrow. No trust, I am. I'm getting, I'm getting those episodes done and I'm gonna watch the first episode. But anyway, am I the only person that has downloaded the theme song? Raise your glass! I can't even remember how it goes now, but I truly, I did. I looked it up. And I downloaded the theme song to, where is it at? I downloaded the theme song to, uh, where is it at? It's called Raise Your Glass, I think. To, oh, here it is. Raise Your Glass by Dina Dudley. That's the theme song to Vanderpump Rules. <laughs> Not sponsored at all. Not sponsored at all. I have lots of thoughts about Vanderpump Rules. After I do my reaction to the first episode of season 11, I'm going to go back and I have been taking notes this entire time I've been watching it. And I have so many thoughts about things, like when Jax Taylor told Lisa that it was his show and things like that. That was uh, episode, that was season eight. And all that kind of stuff. I have so many thoughts about the whole show, the characters, what I thought about the characters, what they should have done going forward, all that kind of stuff. Because they don't ruin this show, okay? This show, it's like, I know, season, everybody's telling me season 10 is like the best. It's okay. So far, I mean, I'm only on one episode. I know. I already know about Scandaval. I know about all that kind of stuff. I know everything that happens in season 10. I just got to watch it for myself play out live. Then I'm going to watch season 11, right? But I think it was, I, I, got, I got some conspiracy theories about Vanderpump Rules, if you want to know the truth. But anyway, I have taken a few days off. Did y'all miss me? Did you miss me? You did. Oh my God. Well, it kind of was like this. One day I just was like, okay, I think I'm going to take the day off. I'm not going to film any videos. And then it was kind of like, okay, I'm going to take a couple more days off. Then yesterday I was going to film videos and I like, it was time management. It was technical difficulties. I was having problems with te technical difficulties. And then we had marriage counseling last night. So anyway, it just, a lot of things happened and I was supposed to come back yesterday. But it don't matter because I'm here now. Did you miss me? Oh my God, I missed you so much. I did. I missed you so much. But let me tell you who I did not miss, okay? I did not miss... Adam McIntyre. Now, let me tell you about Adam McIntyre for a second, okay? He don't even know that this is coming, okay? Because I tried to reach out to him to explain it, but <laughs> he didn't understand it at all. Okay, so I'm rolling through. First of all, I just want to say, I did a video last week. I think it was last week, yeah, where I was talking about I'm struggling. And I've shared a lot about this in my vlog, um, but I wanted to share this over here as well. I, what I shared in that video you know, I did the video in response to Julian Salmonita's uh, video talking about YouTubers, influencers leaving platforms and things like that, right? When I sat down to make that video, what I ended up sharing in that video about myself and what I've been struggling with and things like that, I really honestly, I, I knew I would share a little bit of it, but I didn't really think that it would go to... Um, to the place that it did. I really didn't think that. And then I turned around and I made a vlog and I even shared even more. And then the next day I shared even more, which opened up conversations in my personal life that I hadn't even really allowed myself to have yet other than with people like my therapist and my sponsor. Um, and you know, so I just want to make this very, very clear. Although this is for me, you know, and I know for a lot of people out there where I flip fans and I shade people and I talk funny and flip lip gloss, you know, or some days I have very serious conversations and things like that about stuff, you know, at the same time, like all of this on all of my channels is very, very cathartic for me. 
And I walk away from my videos and I'm like, oh, I never thought about that. Or, you know, I'll read a comment. I'll think I didn't think about that. And it's not just about, I don't live in the world. I know there are a lot of people that do, but I don't live in the world where I turn off my camera and I live in the world of Jeffree Star, Colleen Ballinger, you know, uh, Shane Dawson, Trish Paytas. I don't, I, I turn off my camera and I go watch my shows and hang out with my husband and, and my dog and my friends. And I, that's not what my, I read cozy mysteries and things like that. My life is not consumed with being online 24 hours a day talking about these people. I really could care less if you want to know the truth. I get very interested in, in talking about it because for me, it's like kind of like a reality show to watch, um, which is a lot of what I'm going to be talking about and comparing this because there is a lot of comparisons to the beauty, the beauty community with Vanderpump Rules and why I think Vanderpump Rules ended up kind of like failing towards the end a little bit and then had this resurgence. And so it was interesting when I was watching, I was like, there's a lot of similarities here between like the OGs of the beauty community and things like that. But I just want to say, it really, really helped me to share on video so authentically what I was going through. And it was really the first time that I was able to share that those pieces of what I was going through. And everybody was so receptive of it. And I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. And, um... Sinead, Adam's mother, who Adam McIntyre's mother, who I have mentioned several times in my videos, she and I have become pretty close, and I love her, and I think she's a fantastic mother, and she's become a dear friend of mine as well, and she sent me the m most glowing, supportive message, and I just want to say, um, because I do know that she gets a lot of shit behind the scenes from people that don't like Adam, and so, of course, then they don't like her, you know, as well, and I just want to say, Sinead, I think you are such a beautiful soul, and thank you so so much for reaching out to me with that message and for everybody I had so many youtubers that reached out to me and were checking in on me you know so many people um, you know pretty much everybody in the drama community reached out to me and checked on me and just let me know that you know they were there for me and I just want to say I really appreciate that other people as well it just was like overwhelming the support that I received and so I just want to say thank you so much speaking of Adam McIntyre okay so let's do a little history lesson real quick right Y'all, we know about Moosegate 2024. If you don't know what Moosegate is, Moosegate is that I had these pillowcases, okay, that I got for Christmas. And on the pillowcases, there was what I thought was a deer, okay? Now, it was brought very quickly to my attention by about 300 people that that was actually not a deer, it was a moose, okay? But I held to the fact that that was an effing moose. I would have sworn I would put all my money on it. I would have put my firstborn, which I'm never going to have, <laughs> so it wouldn't have mattered anyway. I would have named my firstborn moose baby. Listen, okay, I would have sworn, listen, Linda, I would have sworn that that was a deer, okay, but I was proven wrong by everybody in the comment sections, and then when I went over to Amazon and I read the name of the sheets, and the sheets were actually named Checkered Moose, well, that was kind of definitive evidence, right? So then I buy, I had it all pulled out and everything. Where's it at? I pulled it. I, so then I had these other pillowcases, right? Okay. I didn't even think about this. I thought they were just trees and cabins. Sure enough, I changed those sheets and I put these new sheets on, okay? And what's on these new sheets? Okay. Is that a deer? Is that a moose? It's a moose. But then these sheet companies, they try to F with me. Okay. Here, here's a bear. Now I know what a bear looks like. I've been in enough gay bars to know that. Okay. There's a bear. But then over here, hold on a second. Because I know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw up a, okay. Then right here, because I'm going to throw up a moose and I'm going to say it's a deer. And here, right here is a deer. Okay. And then here's a moose. So they're trying to F with me. Okay. Then I get in the video and I explain that and people are like, oh no, that's not a deer. That's an elk. Then people are sending me things that say that a moose is the largest anim the largest species in the deer community. <laughs> Did the deer have their own community, like a drama community, like the Candle Review Company? I didn't know the deer had their own community on YouTube. What what's the big I know I know Thumbelina the Squirrel. I live for Thumbelina the Squirrel. Okay, she's Boo Radley's best friend. But I didn't know the deer. Do the deer have their own community on YouTube? TikToks? Are there a bunch of TikTok and deers? with antlers and they're doing dances and things like this. Can you even just imagine? Woo, woo, woo. Okay, I can't, okay? But listen, listen, Linda. I was like, I thought Moose Gate 2024 was over. When you get to name your own scandal, that's when you, listen. We haven't used this word in four years, but I'm bringing it back, okay? You know you're fucking iconic when you name your own scandal. <laughs> okay, and I did. I did all day long. I named it Moose Gate 2024. I'm iconic. Oh, listen, Linda. That's where the haters are like, Peter thinks he's iconic. Oh, blow it out your ass. But anyway, so, um, so I'm rolling through the Instagram one night, right? And I don't know, Adam's like, you know, he's traveling the world and I don't know where he was, you know, Tucson, Arizona or something like that. And he saw these 
these, what he thought was a turkey, okay? He saw these things that were turkeys, and he was like, oh, I've never seen a chicken like this before, or something like that. And I'm like, girl, Shirley, don't call me Shirley. You know that is not a turkey. That is not a chicken. That is a straight up. No, he thought it was a turkey, and they were chickens. They were roosters, right? Not chickens, roosters. And he was like, oh, look at this pretty turkey, or something like that. Well, then he starts posting these DMs that people are sending him on Instagram. He, like, shares them, and they're like, Adam, that's not a turkey. That's a rooster. And he's like, I don't know the difference between a rooster or a chicken. And, a and I was like, oh, no, man. Uh-uh. Oh, no, girl. Uh-uh. You ain't gonna start coming for my gig, okay? So I quickly texted Adam McIntyre. Okay, I quickly texted Adam McIntyre. Hold on a second. Well, I messaged him on, in, on Instagram for a second. I texted him. I quickly uh, messaged him, and I was like, oh, no, you're not coming for uh, Moose Gate. Where, where is it at? Hold on a second here now. Hold on. Let me search Adam. Okay, here it is. So I said, um, don't you dare. <laughs> this was on Friday. Don't you dare try to steal my Moose Gate 2024 Moose versus Deal with your chicken bullshit or we're going to have real drama, LOL. <laughs> and if you even try to come for me on this, I'm turning it into a video is what I said, okay? And then I told him I was actually thinking about making a video just joking about it, right? And he goes, what the fuck are you talking about? Didn't mean... <laughs> He's like, what the fuck is Moose Gate? I'm crying. So he had no idea what Moose Gate was. I was like, oh my God, listen, I got every other drama channel out there in the world, you know, trying to cover my, my gigs and things like that. People have said... I love when people are like, oh, drama channels, this, drama channels, that, blah, 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 whatever, girl. Listen, listen, Linda, okay? Most of us talk on the phone, and we'll be like, oh, what video are you making tomorrow? Oh, I'm making this video. Oh, you should make that video, blah, 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 okay? Uh, Dustin Daly has been telling me for two weeks I need to make that Daisy Fuentes video. I don't even know. D Daisy Fuentes that was on MTV. I told It's not Daisy Fuentes. I don't remember what her name is, but he made a, a video. He's like, oh, this will be good for your video. I was like, trust me. People don't even know who Trisha Paytas is, let alone Daisy Fuentes, okay? Daisy Fuentes from MTV Spring Break or whatever. Y'all remember Daisy Fuentes from back in the day, downtown Julia Brown? Oh, my God! downtown Julie Brown so much. But no, we call each other, right? You know, like, we'll be like, uh, you know, I'll be like, hey, like, you know, text Rich Lux, what video are you making, Rich? He'll be like, oh, I'm making, you know, this video, blah, 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 whatever. And I'm like, okay, I'm not making that on my channel. And then Dustin will be like, you should make the Daisy Fuentes channel. I'm like, I'm not making that video on my channel. I might as well just go back and talk about Jeffree Star. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what it is. So, it, 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 all that kind of stuff. But you ain't, listen, you are not stealing Moose Gate 2024 for me, okay? You are not, okay? I named my own scandal. I'm iconic for it. Can we bring that word back? Has it been enough time since that word's been gone that we can bring it back, okay? Because, like, I'm getting to the age now where I start forgetting words. <laughs> so I can remember iconic, but I still kind of hate that word a little bit. But anyway, so, yeah. So I wanted to call Adam out for trying to steal Moose Gate 2024. But his chicken, he could have turned that chicken and rooster thing. He could have made merch into it and everything. Because people are like, you need to make merch. This is like Moose. Nobody would buy that merch, okay? Maybe, like, the <laughs> Tia, girl, I love you so much. Tia, she's constantly always like, girl, you need to make merch out of this. I'm like... Last night, she was, like, messaging me. I'm like, I know I need to make merch out of this stuff. But, like, I think only, like, 20 people would probably buy Moose Gate 2024. I think it'd be kind of funny, you know? It'd be kind of funny merch. But, anyway, Adam McIntyre, he really had something there with the chickens and the roosters and the hens and the, and the, the it sounds like, a, like, <laughs> over the river and through the woods, right? But, now he let it go after 20, 24 hours. I truly think it was because he was scared of the wrath of Peter Mon with Moose Gate. I do think it was, you know? Or that he was getting on a plane to go travel somewhere else because that's been the last three months of his life. So, so anyway, so no, I'm just joking. I'm not mad at Adam McIntyre. He can he can have Moose Gate. I'm like, listen, I'm done with Moose Gate. So the video that I was gonna make for like the last 15 days, I have a list of drama videos, right? And so the video that I was gonna make today was the fact that Jeffree Star goes off at this event. So this is not really what this video is about. This video is really about is drama jet dead? What happened to the OG drama influencers and things like that? Okay, so if y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Jeffrey Star was at, I just think. When I say stuff about Jeffrey Star, like, you know, being in a, in a closet, doing TikTok lives and whatever, and people are like, yeah, and like, look at your sad life, and you're sitting on a front porch filming videos and whatever, and I'm like, well, first of all, I love my life, okay? I love sitting on a front porch talking to my neighbors, but let's just make this very, very clear, okay? I am not a bullshit artist in any way whatsoever, okay? If I had the money that Jeffree Star had, if I had the money 
Okay, in the private jets and all that kind of stuff. Y'all think I'd be sitting 365 days a year on my front porch talking to my neighbors? Now, I love my neighbors. Trust, I do. Okay? Oh, no, ma'am. Uh-uh. Not with a PJ like Lala Kent calls it. Uh-uh. No, ma'am. I'd be like, you need to fire up that PJ. We're going here. You need to fire up that PJ. We're going there. I'd be all over the place taking my friends on trips. Listen, I'd be living my best life. Okay? I wouldn't be sitting at home. Okay? Swooping my hair over, doing TikTok lives, getting into fights with people. Okay? No, ma'am. I'm sorry. Okay? I'm not a bullshit artist all day long, okay? I love what I do. I feel very, very blessed to do what I do. But I don't have any kind of the resources of Jeffree Star. If I did, you better bet your ass I'd be calling up that, I'd be like, you need to file, fire up that TJ, uh, PJ, <laughs> TJ, you need to fire up that PJ private jet. We're going to uh, Fiji today. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, Manny, we're not going to pick her up along the way. Uh-huh. No, uh, Nathan, no, uh, he got the house. Who else? Uh, no, Trisha, mm, we're not mm, messy. Well, who else? Uh, Colleen, uh, oh, no, we're not going to pick up Colleen. Who else? Oh, Shane. I mean, I haven't talked to Shane in four months, even though he's my best friend. If I was Jeffree Star, no lie, I'd be like picking up my friends. I guess you don't have no friends anymore. All over the place and flying and doing trips and going to fashion shows. I mean, all, what are you doing, girl? Okay, so Jeffree Star is at this TikTok event. <laughs> Can we just put this in perspective? This is the same man that when YouTubers were asked to go to the Met Gala, he dogged the Met Gala. Don't forget this, okay? Y'all want to rewrite history, okay? When James Charles and all those fools were invited by YouTube to go to the Met Gala, do you remember that? Jeffree Star dogged the Met Gala and acted like he would never go because he wasn't invited, okay? But now you're going to TikTok live events, girl. <laughs> Are we going to see you at Playlist Live in Orlando next year, girl? Okay? We're going to see you at buffets across America with your elk meat next year or whatever that is out there that you sell out there that nobody buys. Okay? Because people keep on sending me pictures of your parking lot on the daily. There are people that live in Casper, Wyoming that literally every single day send me pictures, okay? I have two people that live in Casper, Wyoming that every day drive by that meat and makeup shop and send me a picture in the middle of the day, okay, of a, just a bare parking lot with not a car in there, okay? We're gonna see you at Buffets of America, girl! You're gonna be shit tell us some of that jerky coming to you at a speedway near you real soon. Girl, TikTok live of it. Met Gala TikTok live event, okay? So he goes to his TikTok live event, right? And there's this person. I don't really understand the story. All I have to know about it is, I don't know if this person's a good or a bad person. I don't know that, okay? But Jeffree Star, at almost 40 years old, starts calling this person a bunch of the F names and things like that, okay? And I'm like... <laughs> I mean, am I surprised? No, I'm not. Not one bit. I'm not surprised at all. I'm not going to get in here and be all judgy, judgy and things like that today. I'm not surprised. But what I will tell you is this, okay? Is that when people want to say to me that Jeffree Star is a changed person, he's a changed person as far as that hair by Jay chose to use a new wig on his head today, okay? That's as changed as he gets. Because if that is who Jeffree Star is in public, okay? And I know he went on the Logan Paul podcast and explained why he uses that word and all that kind of stuff, blah, 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 blah whatever, right? When you see somebody that is called out multiple times for behaviors in the past, okay, a good inclination that they have changed is that they're not repeating those behaviors in the present, okay? So, for example, you know, when people want to throw in people's faces, oh, you did this 10 years ago, are they doing it today? Like, I said this in a video not too long ago, and it did not, was not a popular opinion, okay? I said, if people aren't doing those same things that they were doing 10 years ago, then I think there's at some point you have to give them some grace and say, okay, I think they've grown somewhat as a person. I believe that all day long, okay? Because I do believe that people can grow and change over time. I do believe that. If I don't believe that, then I have lost all hope for humanity, okay? Including myself, you know, there's a lot of things that I have had to change through the years since I've been on YouTube. And I think I have demonstrated that I have changed that, okay? Because I don't engage in those same behaviors today. I just don't, okay? And nor do other YouTubers and nor do other influencers that have been called out on their shit and they've changed it, okay? So let's just make this very, very clear. I'm not pulling up stuff from 10 years ago to throw in Jeffree Star's face. I'm using it as an explanation to say, you haven't changed from who you were then. Because if this is how, he's shouting it literally at this event, you effing this person, and, I'll, and I'm like, this is how you behave in public as a 37, 38-year-old man? Like, seriously, this is how you behave in public? 
then how do you ha behave behind the scenes when the cameras aren't rolling, you know? Which, by the way, you know, like I, I said years ago, and I'll still say it again, you know, that Gabby Hanna told me on the phone that Shane Dawson, the first time he met Jeffree Star, said that Jeffree Star still uses the same racist language and tried to get Shane Dawson to say it. Now, why would Gabby Hanna at that time, this is before her problematic era. This is when her and Shane Dawson were good, right? The only, piss, the only reason she was pissed off at Shane was because he had done a video trying to hook up Andrew, her ex, on a date, right? But she was still friendly with Shane. What did, why did, was she inclined to throw him under the bus, you know, and all this kind of stuff? Unless there was any truth to that. That's a pretty fantastic story to make up, you know? So, and has never, and I put that in probably 30 videos, 40, 50 videos. Jeffree Star, Shane Dawson, Gabby Hanna have never come out and addressed that. And that was when Gabby Hanna was pretty active on the internet and calling out a bunch of other people that I said that. I said, Gabby, why don't you come out and talk about this if you're going to call these other people out, right? Never said it because she was scared of Jeffree Star is what I believe, right? So does it surprise me that, that Jeffree Star still speaks the same way behind the scenes as he speak as he spoke, you know, at this... No, I think that he speaks horribly behind the scenes. I don't think... I have not seen any demonstration that Jeffree Star is a changed person. And in all honesty, I don't think he really cares. I don't really think that he does, you know? So that was the video that I was going to make talking about... Where am I at on time? Because I want to make sure. I don't know if this is going to stop soon. Oh, I'm at the 20, 21 minute mark. That's not too late. Um, so I wanted to, you know, talk about this whole thing and has Jeffree Star changed, whatever. And here's how it's going to split, okay? The diehard Jeffree Star fans, anybody that j defends Jeffree Star at 38 years old being called out as many times as he has, and they say, well, the... Mm. No, you're a Jeffree Star stan, okay? And you're defending horrific behavior, period, end of story, Okay. Because if it was anybody else, including myself, you would call them out with quickness, okay? Because y'all don't like me anyway, because you know I call out Jeffree Star. So you call me out for stuff, so you would call out Jeffree Star if you didn't like him. So you're a super fan of Jeffree Star, let's just get it clear, okay? Jeffree Star is in a public place making an ass of himself. At 37, 38 years old, as a CEO of a major makeup company, and it's supposedly a best-selling novel memoir coming out this year. And this is how he's behaving at a TikTok Live event that he just got banned from, okay? Girl, seriously? Okay. I said this, I said this in a video like two months ago, okay? I said it's really, really sad. And now he's coming back to YouTube because the views aren't good on TikTok because he got banned on TikTok, whatever. You know, it's like Eugenia Cooney, she's taking a break, whatever. Well, she got banned from TikTok. All these people said, no, Eugenia Cooney, she's not taking time off to get healthy. She's taking time off because she got banned. She got an age restriction on her TikTok. She can't make any money anymore. Well, I've said that forever. All these people are about money. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. Is she back on the TikTok? I don't know. But anyway, I hope the best for Eugenia Cooney. I really do, right? But I said what will be really sad is if Jeffree Star, like, goes out on TikTok, right? Like, if he doesn't just, like, one day... Like, this is... Okay. Joe watch Shit's Creek. I love Shit's Creek, okay? I was late to the game. My husband really, really had to uh, inspire me to watch that show because I was really late to the game. But I ended up loving Shit's Creek. When you watch interviews with Dan Levy and they ask him about like a Shit's Creek reunion or revamping Shit's Creek, he's like, no, like it was good how it ended. It was enough. We went out on top, right? Some of these YouTubers need to think about that. They either need to think about like when they're going to end going out on top or they need to think about um, like, I mean, obviously, okay, I'm not sitting at 16 million subscribers. That's not a thought Peter Mon's thinking about, right? But they either need to do that or they need to think about how am I going to segue this into something else. Like, Jeffree Star, okay, is not going to be at the top of TikTok, the top of YouTube, the top of the makeup game forever. He's just not, right? So for him to say, I've decided I'm not going to do TikTok anymore. I've decided that I'm not going to do this. I'm going to keep up my makeup business. I'm going to keep my meat business going. And then I'm just going to do, like, weekly vlogs where I'm just showing you a week in my life. It would keep him relevant. People would still be interested in him, but it would be kind of like a semi-retirement to some degree, right? But this sh shenanigans that he keeps on pulling to try to stay relevant because he knows people are going to talk about it, A, it's not working for him because nobody really cares, and B, it's pathetic, okay? And when I said that he's going to end up going out, TikTok lighting somebody that nobody even knows who they are because nobody will even go. It's also like this, right? Or is he going to go out on TikTok because he gets banned for doing something so offensive that TikTok won't have him anymore. He's not really pulling the views on YouTube. And so Jeffree Star just kind of floats away. I mean, if you're not getting the views on YouTube and you're not getting the views on TikTok and you're banned on TikTok, who's buying your makeup that you can't even sell out of when you used to be able to sell out in 30 minutes and it's not selling out at all anymore? 
And who's going to buy your book, girl? I mean, I have to wonder if one of the fears of Jeffree Star putting out this memoir is, because I just watched this episode of Vanderpump Rules last season with Lala Kent, when Lala Kent puts out her book. Well, Stassi Schroeder had put out a book, and her book hit the New York Times bestseller list overnight. Lala Kent puts out her book. I mean, the entitlement of these people just kills me, right? Lala Kent puts out a book, and her book doesn't hit the New York Times bestseller list as soon as it comes out. Is that a fear of Jeffree Star's, that his book's going to come out and it's going to be 30th? I mean, like, that's going to show, like, you cannot, you cannot F with the New York Times, okay? I mean, you cannot F with the amount of sales. Like, that stuff is shown through book publishers, okay? Like, Reese Witherspoon Spoon just showed that, I think, it was something like 30 million copies of First Lie Wins, which is her January book for Reese. I mean, you cannot fake those numbers, okay? As somebody that I believe Jeffree Star has been faking the numbers of how much he's been selling for a few years now to make it look like he's selling more than he has, you cannot fake those numbers with publishers, New York Times bestseller lists, things like that, okay? You just can't. So if his book comes out and it comes out at 30th or 100th and nobody's interested in him, what that'll show is that nobody's really interested in Jeffree Star anymore and then he'll have to eat that, right? And then that will be embarrassment to him. So I don't know that he's really that excited to put this book out because what if that book comes out and it flops, you know? You know, nobody's interested in it. I mean, I mean, you can't make up that lie, right? So you go out... What happens if Jeffree Star make, is not, not making YouTube videos anymore, not really selling out of his makeup, is doing these TikTok lives with people, cussing people out at TikTok events? What if he gets banned from TikTok entirely? Nobody really watches him on YouTube anymore, and then Jeffree Star just kind of floats off into the, into the netherworld? That's how Jeffree Star is going to go out? Oh, no, man. Uh-uh. If I were Jeffree Star, like, if I were Jeffree Star, this is truly what I would be thinking about. Where, how do I want this to end for me? How do I want to go out, Okay. Because these shenanigans, this OG drama of cussing people out, calling people names, drama channels picking it up. I can tell you right now, if I put Jeffree Star on the title of his name, it won't get any views, okay? If, if, like, if he does something huge, and like if he settled down and got a new boyfriend, the boyfriend moved into his house, that would pull some views, okay? If, Jeff, if Jeffree Star retired from YouTube and TikTok, that would get views. If Jeffree Star came out and did a whole video taking accountability for his past, that would get views. If Jeffree Star came out and said that he was closing down Jeffree Star Cosmetics, that would get views. But Jaclyn Hill coming out and closing down Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics, that didn't even get that many views, okay? So I think the reality is he's quitting this too late, okay? When you look at these other people out there that were part of this industry, and I'm not going to like talk about all the other stuff out there, but like Manny and Mue, right? Like Manny and Mue and Laura Lee, like when they had their cancellation, they came back and I think, and I've said this in many videos, that they were just like, okay, we're not going to get these huge amount of views anymore. We're just not. So we're cool with accepting the views that we get and getting the sponsorships that we get and just accepting that. Like this is the life that we're going to have, you know? James Charles, now, every video he posts, it's so pathetic because he never used to do this before. On his community tab, on Twitter, on Instagram, all this kind of stuff, he's always posting, did you see my latest video? Did you see my latest video as translation into, nobody fucking watch my video, will you go please watch my video? That's what that translates into, okay? Shane Dawson does the same thing. That's a trick that we used to do 10 years ago, okay? The, the fact that they're still doing it, Shane Dawson's changing thumbnails on his video. He did his video called I Tried Fresca for 24 Hours or Baja Blast for 24 Hours. And it was his picture in like all these pictures of Baja Blast. And then the next day, somebody sent me, I don't even check for it anymore. I should probably check for it right now. I don't even check for it anymore because it's so pathetic. But the next video that he posted was called, like, I've changed. It was the same video. He's going back to the changing of the thumbnails. I've changed so much or something like that. Oh, he's changed it. Confronting my strange addiction from six days ago. He's now changed it because somebody sent this to me. He's now changed it like three or four times, okay? Because it was called something else. I have a screenshot of it. Right now, here, I'm going to... Uh, hold on a second. Let me turn down the brightness on my... Where am I at on time? This is going to stop. Hold on just a second. I have like a minute left. So let me turn down the brightness so I can show you guys this, okay? So here's his newest video right here. It's called Confronting My Strange Addiction, okay? The last video that he did, hold on a second, let me see if I can find it, was, how do you do this? <laughs> I can't see because it's so dark. Okay, Shane, it was him sitting on the couch. Somebody just sent this to me and I screenshot it. See all. Well, anyway, it was him sitting on, oh, here it is. Um, it's called, hold on a second. I have a problem. That was where it was, okay? So now, Shane Dawson, whose original title was I Drank Baja Blast for 24 Hours, has gone to this looking real sad. 
in a couch video hoping that that's going to get him more views and then he called it I have a problem to then his face up looking at this calling it um my strange addiction okay he is grasping at straws to pull any views on that channel anymore right well if you're changing your title from a drinking Baja Blast for 24 hours and nobody wants to watch it to these sad ass thumbnails of coming out and saying I have a real problem why don't you talk about your real problem why don't you come out and, and your podcast is doing okay. I mean, it's not pulling as many views as your pal Trisha Paytas. I think that's interesting, you know, but you're doing okay. Your podcast is doing okay. It's, I mean, for the sponsorships and the money that you make off of it, it's sustainable income. I don't know if it's sustainable income for two homes that are rather large, a working farm and a ranch in California. I don't know if, and, and two babies, I don't know if it's sustainable for that, you know, but your podcast is doing okay. You know, but I think like all these people, like this is what I got to thinking about. I was like, they're all going to these drastic lengths that they've gone to here. I need to turn the brightness up again. They're all going to these drastic lengths that they've gone to for years and years and years to keep up the relevancy, right? And it's really not working for them. I mean, in all honesty, and, and I know, and I, like I said, I'm not talking, I didn't talk about Manny Mue and Laura Lee's problematic stuff, so I'm not talking about Trisha Paytas and stuff. I'm just talking about them as YouTubers that I've covered through the years, right? In all honesty, like, Trisha Paytas coming out with her Just Trish podcast was very smart, okay? It was a reinvention of herself of saying, I don't need anybody to depend on. I'm going to come out and I'm going to do this on my own, and it's working for her. She's getting a lot of views over that off that channel, okay? Do I agree with everything that she does over there? Absolutely not. Do I think she has problematic people on there? 100%. But she, it was a very smart reinvention for her. If Trisha Paytas is somebody that knows how to reinvent themselves on, on, on uh, as an influencer, I mean, she, if there's somebody that knows how to in, reinvent themselves as an influencer, it's Trisha Paytas, right? Do I think that it would even benefit her greater? And I've come out and said this for her to address everything that's going on and say that I, I need to make all these changes. Yes. But Trisha Paytas is actually doing pretty good on YouTube right now compared to some of these other people. You know, Jeffree Star, I mean, it's just, it's, it's kind of sad, you know? And so I'm like looking at all this and I'm like, is drama Jed, you know, like some of the big drama that should have really pulled views years ago doesn't really pull views anymore. Like the fact that Trisha got pregnant the first time, let alone the second time, like that's not really like nobody's really that interested on her channel or anybody else's channel. The fact that Shane had twins, you know, nobody really cared about that, you know? And then the fact that Jeffree Star is acting out, Jeffree Star has been acting out for years on end. Nobody's really interested in this, these people. Nobody really cares, you know? And so I'm sitting there and I'm watching this, right? As I'm sitting there and I'm watching, this is very important, okay? And I know this is corny to a lot of people. But I'm watching season 8 and season 9 of Vanderpump Rules. Now, if you've watched Vanderpump Rules all the way through, what you'll know is season 8, okay, is when Jax and Brittany get married, okay? Stassi and Bo get um, engaged. And Kristen, Stassi, and, Br and Jax get kicked off the show, okay, for racist comments that they made. And then they don't come back for season 9. And the rest of season 8 is really kind of not about them either, okay? And so then Brittany goes with Jax, Bo goes with Stassi. And so it's five cast members that were a pretty huge part of the show that are gone. Season 9 is, well, really half of season 8 and season 9 is really them trying to revamp with new cast members. Season 8 has a lot of new cast members too. A lot of them got uh, thrown into that whole situation and they didn't come back like Brett and Max. And then there are other people in there like Dan and Danica that didn't come back for other reasons as well. And the show just kind of like went through this whole thing, which is why I have some conspiracies about what happens in season 10 going into season 11. The show was dead, okay? The show was absolutely dead. And they had to do something to reinvent Vanderpump Rules, right? So I'm, really, I'm sitting there watching it as I'm thinking about making this video, I'm like making notes about it and whatever, and I'm like, really what these OG beauty influencers, YouTubers, Shane Dawson, Trisha Paytas, all these people need to do is they, they need to reinvent themselves, right? And I'm such a big believer that people really love a comeback story, you know? And the one common theme that all these people have, like Manny, like Laura, like Jeffree Star, like even Toddy Westbrook, like James Charles, you know, like Shane Dawson, like Trisha Paytas, like all these people, is that they were really at one point or another rather shit people, you know? that have taken very little accountability for their shit actions, have really never, except for like one video, when they had to come out in a save their ass moment and address it, they really never come out and addressed it, you know? It would be fantastic if they came out, I cannot believe my battery is dying, so I'm gonna have to hurry this up. It would be fantastic if they came out and, and addressed it. If I was going into 2024 and I was any one of these people, I'd be asking myself, how do I reinvent myself as the comeback story?
Oh my god, that battery was dead, dead. That battery was so better. That but was that ba a battery battery? <laughs> that battery battery was dead, dead. But anyway, everybody loves a comeback story. You know, everybody loves a comeback story. So if I were going into 2024 and I was any of these people, you know, I'd be like, I, to be honest with you, I mean, some of them are doing okay. Like Manny and Laura, like I said, I think they've just accepted the fact that they're never going to be on a huge level again. And they're okay with that. You know, they have amazing lives. They have homes, you know, they have thriving, well, maybe not thriving businesses, but they have sustainable businesses. I mean, I don't know. Are they going to close down the next year? I guess we'll find out. But they get okay views in their YouTube. Not great. But they get okay for what they post. I mean, they have income that they're making. They're doing good. They're getting brand deals. They're getting sponsorships. It's probably closer to where when they started and they first took off is the income that they're making now. But they're doing okay. You know, Trisha Paytas is doing okay. But is it on the level of where they were before? No. And there's a lot of people, like Julian was saying, that are leaving YouTube, that there's room for rebirth and regrowth of these people to reinvent themselves. If I were any of these people, the question I would be asking myself is, you know, like James Charles, I can remember years ago before any of the scandals, he said to me something like, if you were, like, as a drama channel, what was the number one thing that you would change for me? Like, if, if this is before the scandals, any of the scandals, okay? He was like, what's the number one thing that you would change for me that you think would help my career? And I said, I would cut your hair. I would do a new haircut. And he was like, oh, no, I have to keep my haircut, whatever. I go, okay. He goes, why do you say that? I go, because it's reinventing yourself. It's giving something, something new. I'd shave your head on, on a video. You know, I'd say, like, we're going to raise a bunch of money for some charity, and if we get it to $100,000 or we get it to $50,000, I'll shave my head on camera. People will live for it. Your audience will live for it, and it'll give you a new hairstyle. Oh, no, I'm not ever cutting my hairstyle. This My hairstyle is who I am. I'm like, James, your hairstyle is 50 other TikTok beauty influencers. Your hairstyle is not you. Oh, no, 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 I can't do that, right? Just one example of how uh, influencers have reached out to drama channels and not taking our advice, okay? I said, girl, I'm telling you right now. I said, if you do a charity fundraiser and say if you run a, a raise enough money, okay, you'll shave your head on camera and then you talk about the charity, you will raise money for a charity, people will live for it, you will get a new hairstyle, you can have your head shaved for a couple months, people will live for it, right? Oh no, girl, I couldn't do that. This hairstyle is who I am. Here we are now, all these years later, people are still making fun of that hairdo, right? There are so many ways to, you know, and that was when I really believed in James Charles, that he could be a changed person. I don't know today, right? But any of these people could, like, change themselves. For example, while I'm sitting there watching Vanderpump Rules, I came up with this idea for Jeffree Star. Because I think Jeffree Star is really running out of ideals, ideas, if you want to know the truth. Like, I think, really, Jeffree Star doesn't know what to do. Well, if I were Jeffree Star, I would quit the TikTok thing, first of all, okay? I would come out and I would say, I started on YouTube. I would make a video, and I'd make it three minutes long. And I'd say, I'm done with TikTok. I'm done with TikTok Lives, okay? I started on YouTube. I'm coming back to YouTube, and that's going to be where I am. And everything going forward is going to be different. And I would fade off. I would just do it like a one-minute video, let everybody get all hyped up about, like, what is Jeffree Star going to do? He's leaving TikTok. He's coming back to YouTube. What's going to be different? Everything is going to be different. And then when he comes back, what I would do is he started with three liquid lipsticks. I would come back with three liquid lipsticks. And I would have them be very... He's done color for years and years and years. All this different color that people live for, right? I do I do a very neutral three liquid lipsticks. Come back with three liquid lipsticks and say, I started with three liquid lipsticks. I'm coming back with three liquid lipsticks. This is a rebirth. I would have no makeup on my face. My hair slicked back. And I would do a makeup tutorial of very neutral tones and say, this is, an, this is I would have, you know, like, just show it from here up and have his hair completely slicked back and say, this is my rebirth. And I'm starting all over. And I need to take some accountability for the things that I've done in my past. And I want to show that I'm a different person today. Completely unmotivated by any scandal that he has to get himself out of just because he wants to be a better person. And come out with where he started again with three lipid lipsticks. I think people live for it. I think that he would get a whole new audience that he's never gotten before, okay? You know, we live in an era where people want people to take accountability and change and grow and things like that, you know? Maybe he doesn't have the ability to do that. But he could, you know? There's a lot of people that could do all kinds of different things, you know? Um, I think it's all about, you know, we, we've thought that these people were creative geniuses for years. How is it that a lowly drama channel that gets criticized left and right for calling these people out can sit up and come up with an idea like that? Are you telling me, like, that's just one thing I came up with in 30 seconds. I could come up with 100 ideas for Jeffree Star of how to reinvent himself from a PR point of view that he wouldn't even have to do to really believe in, Okay. But what this proves to me is that a lot of these people, when they get in videos and they talk about the changes that they've gone through, and this is why I used to make, oh, the changes, I'm, I'm a change person. They haven't done the work. They're continuing to do the same things that they've done before, right? Well, in the past, those were selling points, okay? 
but nobody's really interested in that anymore, right? And I think today we live in an era where people want to buy products from people that they believe in, okay? People don't want to buy products from shit people. So you got to show people that you're a changed person, that you're a growing person, that you're changing and that you're evolving, you know? By the way, one last thing I want to say is that I put up these uh, different Instagram, I was being real inspired on Instagram last night. I put up these Instagram stories uh, last night. Hold on a second. Um, these are my Instagram stories that I quoted last night. I put, hanging out with myself is honestly a vibe. Accept what is, let go of what was, and have faith in what will be. I love it when you hand a dog a treat and they are like, thanks, I'll be having this in the other room. Excuse me. Um, and then I put, there are people that will never support you because it's you. There, then there are people that will always support you because it's you. You just have to find your people. Surround yourself with people who will fight for you in rooms you are not in, which is one of my favorite quotes ever. And I put this up here. I put, I love people that have no idea how wonderful they are and just wander around making the world a better place. And when I posted that, I was really thinking about the huge amount of comments and support that I received on my video that I did the last week about how I'm struggling and all the support and the kindness that I received from you guys. I was really thinking about you when I posted that comment. Can I just tell you how many, this like, I was like crying you guys. How many people like responded to that and said, oh my God, Peter, this is you, you know? These relationships are reciprocal. And I am just so grateful that you guys even want to watch my videos. It means the world to me, you know? So anyway, here's to a better 2024. Here's to maybe not having so much drama to talk about. Maybe these people reinvent themselves and become the best versions of themselves. I've always ever only wanted that for people, you know? I don't know, maybe Patrick Starr will up. Uh, <laughs> I'll have to talk about him, but girl, my channel will be dead then because he never pulled no views on my channel. Patrick Starr never pulled no views on my channel. Is he even still around? Ooh. I don't know her. Anyway, I love you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.